that was a uh, wonderful introduction by Steve, um, half of which was true. <laughs> um, but thank you very, very much. Um, you know, talking about Gmail, I, how many hands came up about who had Gmail accounts? Okay. How many have, um, don't, don't feel bad, how many have Yahoo mail accounts? Okay. How about AOL? Okay. Hotmail? All right. Gmail just reminded me the, uh, when, so I had been at Google for about a month, and I walked by my boss's office uh, late one night, um, and uh, she called me and said, Roy, Roy, do you know much about email? And I said, I'm familiar with the concept. And um, she said, well, Google is starting an email service. And th there's some people that are working on it, but they need a, a business manager, someone to run the business operations, which is everything from um, handling the support to uh, figuring out how to make any money with it uh, to some of the you know, larger uh, strategic questions. So I said, sure. Um, so I went over and found this product manager and these engineers and, and told them I'm here to help, which everyone at Google likes to hear. And uh, we were supposed to launch in January, they were going to launch in February, and it's getting closer to April, so we decided we're going to launch on April 1st, which seemed like such a great idea uh, at the time. Uh, but anyway, we launched April 1st, but a week before launch, we still did not have a name. Uh, we had about five names we had finalized. Uh, Gmail was, I think, number four on the list. Uh, and it came down to our final meeting where we were going to finally come up with a name for Gmail. And if you're at, like a real company, uh, you have like McKinsey come in and all these marketing consultants and you test the name and you brand it and you make sure this works. Um, we just like argued about it for a long time and finally one of our execs said, you know what, we should just go with Gmail because it's sexier. Um, <laughs> I don't know like what planet you're from where that's sexy, but the, uh, we, we launched it, that's what we picked. Um, it was uh, successful and I was always kind of embarrassed about the, uh, the name uh, until a month ago Yahoo released a new brand of their uh, mail service. Do you guys know what it was called? Ymail. It's market validation for you. We had finally, uh, finally won, so I was very proud of that. The, uh, well, welcome to In One Weekend. I am uh, extremely honored to be here. I've never, uh, never gotten to come to Cincinnati before, uh, but, uh, but Steve has told me all about this event and, and really uh, the energy and enthusiasm that I saw in registration and in the room today is really really tangible. Uh, as Steve said, I just came out of this three-day management conference. We brought hundreds of managers together uh, working on some of our really weediest and most difficult problems. Uh, and when you, the energy that you feel when there's a large group of people that are coming together to solve interesting problems, you, you can really feel it. And I, and I feel that, that here now. Uh, I really do think that at the end of this three-day weekend, we're going to uh, be able to start a, a new venture and make it successful. Um, and so I'm going to be very excited to, uh, to hear about it. Um, you know, I imagine, how many are participating in the uh, three-day week? Raise your hand. Okay. So if I were you, I would probably be maybe feeling a little trepidation, maybe a little nervous, maybe hungry, looking forward to the cocktail hour afterwards. Um, but certainly it's, it's entering a, a new world. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about starting a new venture and about things that I think are, are important in starting a new venture and things that I've learned at Google. Now, look, I didn't... I didn't found Google. I wasn't there with like Larry and Sergey when they started the company. But at Google, there's plenty of opportunities for entrepreneurial behavior. You know, Gmail is a great example. When I went to India, you know, Steve said rightly there are about a thousand employees when I left. But the first day that I was there, we had 20. Um, and I've gotten to do plenty of new ventures, new opportunities. And so there's a few things I've learned I'd like to share with you that uh, that may ease some of the fear and trepidation and may uh, inspire more questions down the road. And, and there's three things I think are really important. Uh, Number one is, is having a, a large vision and a, and a compelling vision and getting a team rally behind it. Uh, number two uh, is, is understanding risk and embracing failure. Um, and then finally is thinking beyond uh, actually starting the business and starting the venture and thinking about extending the model and building a team. Uh, because it's really not just in one weekend. Uh, hopefully what we start here this week and will go on for, uh, for years and years to come. So number one, uh, the vision. Uh, does, does anybody know what Google's mission statement is? No, oh, that's, that's horrible to say. <laughs> Organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Um, that is actually how we guide the entire company. It's, uh, it is our, uh, it's our, it's our guiding light, and, and this is how we make decisions as a company. And we, 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 we focus on the user. We focus on 
don't be evil. We focus on these other things as well, but our central mission of organizing the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful is core to what we do. To the point where um, we believe that the world's information, which includes everything on the web, email, everything in, in books, everything in, in video and audio, uh, personal information that you want to organize, is all equally important. This is a huge mission, so it's very, very general, but it's also very specific. Like, we're not going to start putting horoscopes on our, our homepage. Uh, because we don't know if this is actually useful uh, for, uh, for everybody that uses our, our, our product. In, uh, in India, we, we had a similar vision when, when I went over there. Um, how many of you have been to India before? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the most multinationals that operate in India do it on, on a basis to um, you know, take advantage of differing labor costs uh, or to, to have people work at night for U.S. customers during the day or a number of other things. I remember that there was a a large uh, American bank that, uh, that operates in, in India. I'm not going to say the name of it. Um, but they're, they're very concerned about the brand image. And so in India, they, they call their, their service there Continuum Solutions. It's a very sort of like Dilberty name. Um, and the employees work all night. And they're not allowed to use their names uh, when they answer the phone. Instead of being um, uh, you know, Chaitan or Prem, they have to be John or, or Mike. Um, we wanted to do something much different. One is that we went to, Ind we went to India to scale and to get really big. Um, Google, uh, at the time, had a few thousand employees, and we, we knew that we needed to, to grow much bigger, and, and India was one way to do that. We also knew that we needed to, uh, to show that you could operate a large office in another country and still keep your same values and, and the same things that are important uh, to you and exemplify them and show them to the world that you can operate a business with your core values intact no matter where you work. Everything we did was around this, this core value, and I communicated this to our employees on a constant basis, some, sometimes in very strange ways. Uh, like, for example, managers weren't allowed to have offices. Uh, India, especially in the management world, is very hierarchical. Um, and you could certainly find out a lot about a candidate for a manager position when you brought him in and said, here's your new office, and it's a cube, like right in the middle of the floor. And you look for that flinch as soon as you say it. And if, if you see it, you know that, that he or she is not the right person. Uh, when we started doing email support, one of my employees came up to me and said, so what are, our, what are the names we're supposed to use? And I said, well, your name is Sashmita, so I suggest you use that one because you should be proud of it. You should be proud of what we do here. Um, we also were completely transparent in how we did things. Every metric that we had about our business, except for a few that were specific to revenue, we shared with our employees. And not only did we share them, but we showed here's what they can look like two or three years out uh, and gave them an idea of the scale and scope that we were talking about. Um, and this, this vision permeated the entire organization. So even when we had 30, and then we grow to 100, and 300, and 500, and, and 1,000, and beyond, it actually feels the same. The building's bigger. Um, there's a lot more food, because we do the free food thing there as well. Um, the, um, and actually, the building's a lot nicer, too. Uh, but certainly, we still have the same culture and values that we did when we still had 30 employees. And the way that you take this vision and the way that you, you make it real for your employees, make it real for your, uh, for your company, is you have to break it down into bite-sized pieces. So for example, uh, organizing the world's information, we believe that we've uh, organized about 2% of uh, the entire world's information. So we have a, a long way to go. Um, what we do every year and every quarter is we have what's called objectives and key results. And this is a, a process that, uh, that Google uh, borrowed, stole from uh, Intel. Um, where every quarter uh, they take their objectives for that quarter and they devolve them down and say, like, here's a, a, a key result that we expect to have out of it. So, for example, um, uh, if you know, in in, uh, in web search, if we said that instead of you know indexing another million books or another million magazines into uh, into our index, we'll actually set a goal around it and measure ourselves. And we actually set our goals at Google, and every quarter we set our objectives so that we can hope to hit maybe 70 percent. In fact, at the end of the quarter, we measure all of our OKRs. We expect to be about 70%. If we hit about 80% or more, that means our goals were too easy. And if we hit less than 70%, that meant we were slacking off for the quarter and, and must not have done our work very well. So setting very difficult objectives and pushing ourselves very hard, but also going back and holding ourselves accountable. And this is how you take that big vision and work it down on a, on a very individual basis and very immeasurable. And these OKRs then trickle down to every single employee in the company. And in fact, if, if you were to work at Google and you look in our company address book, um, every time you search for someone's name, it calls up their picture, their phone number, and it says a link under their picture says OKRs. And if you click on it, it says exactly what they're working on that quarter and exactly what they're measuring themselves. And then you can click back and see what their grades they gave themselves for previous quarters. 
is an incredible tool for accountability and also for, for taking the vision and, and spreading out to the entire enterprise.